Hey folks, it's Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge, and we're looking at another fixed blade today. And uh, the reason is, I'm running out of knives. <laughs> I don't know, is it the Canada Post strike? Probably that's part of it, why stuff just isn't coming in the way it should. I've been waiting for a while for several packages of knives, and I'm not sure when they're going to get here. So, well, we'll see what happens on this channel over the next few days. I'll think of something to show on these reviews. Um, I still don't have a perfect system for doing my edge retention testing. I'm, I'm working through it. I've got something that works really, really well, but it ends up, uh, you know, doing little scratches on the sides of the knives all the time. You know, cutting through that uh, uh, scotch brake pad stuff. So I'm not too fond of that because then the knives are scratched up on the bevels. So still working on that. Today, this is HX Outdoors TD08 Outdoorsman's Knife. I'm not calling it a bushcraft knife. I'm not calling it a survival knife. Uh, there's all kinds of things I could call it. I'm just calling it an outdoorsman's knife or outdoors woman's, whatever, an outdoor knife. Basically, we've got you know an outdoors knife with a drop point, a saber grind, which is a flat grind that doesn't come up to the spine, and, you know, basic V-grind on the bevel, I mean, on the final grind, uh, the bevel's a uh, saber grind. Uh, other than that, it's a full tang blade. It's got uh, wood handle scales that screw in place with these uh, pins, uh, Torx pins, and uh, OS 8 steel. Leather sheath, uh, the kind where the belt loop is fairly high up, which is what I like. So when the knife is in the sheath, it's got a little snap there, holds it quite well. You know, see no noises and stuff. Leather's good for that. Uh, it's, it's an economy budget leather sheath. There's nothing extra special about this sheath, but it's built fairly well and it's, you know, got a good snap here. I'm glad when they don't do Velcro and stuff like this. I hate Velcro for outdoors use. Uh, the belt goes right through here. So the belt loop, handle is about the same height as your belt is. So I like being grabbing the handle of a knife at the level where my belt is or a little bit lower. Uh, it's one of those fold over sheaths so it's just sewn up on the side there. So that's it. So let's put this thing on the tabletop and take a good close look at it. Stick around. Okay, generally speaking, I'm quite fond of HX Outdoors as a brand. They do good work, and this knife is no exception. It's definitely a budget knife. Um, it's around well, under 30 US dollars. You can find it under $30, no problem. Um, I paid just about $28.50 or something like that US dollars, and I don't think that's a bad number for this knife at all. I already showed you the sheath, but let's take a little bit of a close-up look at it here. Uh, let's zoom in on this. There you go. So you can see the stitching there. You know, it's not superb stitching, but not bad at all. And, you know, the leather treatment is done fairly well. No problems. No drain hole down here, which I would like it to have, but you can always drill a little bit of a drain hole right there at the bottom and... Uh, wouldn't be that hard to do just uh, using a little drill bit by hand and you just sort of twirl it in there if you've got nothing better. Um, so yeah, you could do that without too much effort. And then they use rivet pins to hold it together and there's that snap. So let's put that aside. So here's the knife. What do we have? We've got, um, it's probably some kind of rosewood handle. Um, I didn't double check exactly what kind of wood it was. Uh, it's not uh, made exactly to the size of the knife. So these handles are made separately from the, uh, the, the blade. So they don't put the handles on and then grind everything even. They just quickly mill these out. You can see the milling lines on here. So they got some kind of CNC machine for wood that they've milled it out. And especially right here, you can see the texture, I think. Yeah, you can see those lines right through there. So yeah, it's been milled out. That texture actually helps give it a little bit extra grip, which is a good thing. There's a bit of a swell right here in the middle. So the swell comes this way and it swells a little bit on the thickness as well. 
Uh, very comfortable knife in hand. My hands are large, almost extra large, and my hand fits perfectly in this knife. Uh, there's no, uh, you know, there's no extra play back and forth. Uh, good grip, good reverse grip on this knife. Uh, pinch grip, all kinds of good grips fit very, very well for somebody who's got hands my size. It's between 10 and 11 in the European um, measurement for, for men's gloves. And there's the bevel. And the bevel, you can see just a little bit of the grind lines going down. And then it's a stone wash on top of that, which is quite good. There's no Ricasso. Sorry, there is a Ricasso. There has to be. That's the flat zone. The flat zone right where it says OS 8 right there. I don't know. You can maybe see it right there. That's called the Ricasso, that flat zone. There's no sharpness choil is what I wanted to say. And uh, so that's, I've sharpened this since, and that's why you can see, let me see if I zoom in on this. If I can see it now. You can see how when I was sharpening it, there's an odd little line right there. And that's what I like to avoid with a sharpener's choil. Yeah, it is what it is. A lot of knives of this style uh, and this kind of size for this kind of purpose don't have a sharpener's choil. So it's really not a big deal. I prefer to have it, but not a big deal at all. I like how, you know, it says HX Outdoors on here, but it's not super bold. You can just barely see it. You know, they took some laser etching to laser etch that in there as well as the OS 8, and then here's the model number, TD08, and there's the Chinese symbol for HX Outdoors Company. And on the back here, on the spine, there is a serial number. Yeah, nice knife. Torx uh, T9 fits in here very well to take this apart. Uh, they did use a little bit of a thread locker in there, so you do have to be careful. Um, use Drive Grip, that product that I've talked about a number of times. Uh, it's a product that you put into screw heads or onto the end of a screwdriver to give you much greater grip uh, so you don't strip out screws as easily. These screws are fairly soft steel, uh, so you can strip these rather easily if you're not careful. I did mar uh, them up just a tiny bit to get them apart. Uh, they're still functional, but you will want to be careful if you get your own and you do take it apart. So there you go, that's the basic gist of it. Nice tip, strong tip. The drop point looks good. Uh, the weight is really good. Let's do all the dimensions and all that stuff right now. I'm gonna zoom in just a bit for this. Cutting edge, 9.8 centimeters, 3.86 inches. Uh, the blade length, so the tip of the blade to the wood right there, 10 centimeters, 3.94, so it's almost the same both ways. The blade thickness is only 2.75 millimeters, so it's not a super thick steel, that's 0 0.108, so a tenth of an inch, but not bad for this kind of knife. It's actually a really good size for this kind of knife. The blade depth, that's this dimension right here, 2.8 centimeters, 1.1 inch. And the thickness of the edge behind the grind is 0.66 millimeters, that's 0.26 of a... Uh, 0 0.026 of an inch. <laughs> Got that just about right. The uh, grind angle from the factory, yeah, 19 degrees on one side, 24.5 on the other side. Very typical for knives in this price range. Uh, so it took a little bit of sharpening. It's now 20 degrees on both sides. It didn't take too terribly long because OS 8 isn't all that hard. It's around 57 uh, Rockwell hardness and I tested it, the edge retention is very typical for OS 8, so yeah, it's an OS 8 steel, or the Chinese equivalent, very, very close to OS 8. Uh, the rest of the dimensions, the handle length is 11.4 centimeters, that's almost four and a half inches, 4.49. The handle thickness, right there, it's the thickest, it gets a little thinner where the two screws are, and then it gets thicker right at the ends again. So I measured it right here in the middle, 1.8 centimeters, that's 0.71 of an inch. But since it's thinner here, it's still a very good grip. The handle depth, its biggest right there, is 2.6 centimeters, just over an inch, 1.02. The grip space, so between my thumbs, is about 9 centimeters, just over 3.5 inches. 
The total length is 21.3 centimeters, which is 8.39 inches. It weighs 128 grams, which is 4.55 ounces. Nice light knife. You add in the sheath, and now it's 170 grams, 6.05 ounces. Six ounces on your belt, not a problem at all. Very, very good for the weight. Nice and light. No wonder they didn't skeletonize the inside. So now let me show you the inside of the knife, taking the handles off. So I took a, I tried with a T8 screw and I ended up almost starting to strip one of these screws out a little bit, but all it took was a T9 screw on both sides. So I held it in a small vise and uh, yeah, it comes apart relatively easily. You can see that there's a little bit of glue residue in here. So they did use some, some kind of glue but it's not so thick that you need to scrape it off or anything. So take it apart. There's no skeletonizing in the handle, but uh, yeah, it's relatively nice, easy to use. So if you do use this knife in a situation where you, you're hunting, you take an animal apart, if you get blood behind the handle scales, you can just take it apart relatively easily and clean it up. So that's a really good thing. Okay, so how much does this cost? Well, I already told you it's $28.50, roughly $28.70, something like that. Uh, you'll find it in other stores. I got mine through Gearbest. Uh, Gearbest doesn't have it in stock uh, the very moment that I'm recording this. Who knows? They might have some in tomorrow or the day after. I will also give you some other places where you can buy this. Check the links down below uh, to make it easy for you to buy this knife. If you If you do end up getting it from Gearbest, Please do use my link because that does help out my channel financially just a little bit. Uh, so what are the special features of this knife? Um, well, first, the special features that it doesn't have. There's no lanyard hole. Some guys really, really want lanyard holes. For a knife like this, I don't care at all that there is no lanyard hole, but somebody else might care, and so you need to be aware of that. You know, if you just missed it by oversight, I'm saying it out loud. Uh, sharpener's Toil, I like if it has one, but it doesn't. I do really like the uh, stone wash. Stone wash helps, it, uh, helps hide little scratches and stuff. I just really like the look of stone wash. And somehow I like the feel of stone wash as well. It, it, it almost gives it kind of a, a polished kind of feel, which is kind of counterintuitive because it looks like it should be rough because of the, you know, the stone wash, but it's actually nice and smooth. I like how the tip is quite strong and the balance point is right there. That's not bad at all. It's got a really good ratio between the handle and the blade. Uh, just under four, just, you know, four and a half here. So that's a really good ratio. And the weight, like I was saying, is really, really good. Um, it cuts very well. Now let's try it with some rope here. So straight through without any sawing motion, not a problem at all. Aus 8 is a very good outdoorsman's kind of steel for general purpose use. And, you know, it's just good that way. Uh, of course, it does fine on paper as well. You know, it cuts. You go straight down on a piece of paper and it cuts right in. And that's without having to do, you know, a slicing motion. And you're sliding the blade across. That generally cuts with almost any steel, but if you're just holding it in one spot and pushing straight in and keeping it on the same spot on the blade, you know, that shows you that the blade can be sharpened very, very well. So that's the nutshell for this knife. How would I use this knife? This is a good outdoors carry knife. If I was camping, this is the kind of knife I would have on me all day long. Um, if I was going hiking, uh, food prep, uh, you know, all kinds of little things. Sure, I could use it for batoning, kindling, uh, nothing more than kindling I wouldn't do with this, but it can take care of little stuff like that. So all kinds of little tasks. Uh, you know, you do have enough of a flat spot there. If you do really need to sneak up and do something fine, you can, but, you know, I'd probably do more of this kind of fine cutting than I would, you know, this kind right here. Um, I know I didn't explain it that well, but 
I think you understand what I mean. Uh, full flat grind, yeah, I really like that on a lot of knives, but this doesn't really need it because it's not so thick that it needs a longer plane of an angle coming down to the cutting edge. Uh, what we have is, you know, half of an inch here, a little over half of an inch actually of a bevel going down to that edge. Uh, it's a little thick behind the grind for an EDC folder, but this isn't that. This is an outdoors knife, so 0.6 to 0.7 uh, thickness behind the grind is just fine for this kind of knife. And uh, I like it. It looks good. It feels good. It works well for what it is. It's, it's got a sheath system that doesn't have this tech lock thing, so it's not, you know, way down low and trying to pivot off of your hip. You know, with your belt in here, it's hanging very nicely. It's a good knife. I really like it, and I recommend it. At this price point, there's no reason, uh, as far as I can see, uh, that would hold me back from suggesting it to be a good purchase for yourself or for, you know, for Christmas for a friend or something. Um, if you do order it, order it now if you want it in time for Christmas because most Chinese vendors are going to take uh, several weeks to get it to you. So thanks for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, guys, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.